It's good to see you in God's house tonight. We welcome you in the Saviour's precious name, and especially if you're visiting with us. We're going to open our service tonight by singing a lovely hymn, 248, in our own hymn book, Under the Burden of Guilt and Care, Many a Spirit is Grieving, Who in the Joy of the Lord Might Share Life Everlasting Receiving. Let's all stand as we sing this lovely hymn together. That's good singing. Let's bow our heads in prayer and let's seek the Lord's face tonight. As you know, this morning we were sympathizing with quite a number of folk in our church and connected to our church that have been bereaved. And I just heard this afternoon that our sister, Miss Joy Gillespie's mother, passed away today. So to the Gillespie family, we want to sympathize with them tonight, the Joy and Gillian and the family circle. And you remember them in your prayers this week as well, please. With all the others that have been bereaved. But let's remember the Gillespie family tonight in prayer. Lord, we thank Thee and we praise Thee that once again we're found in the house of God, the living to praise Thee. And Lord, we do praise Thee tonight. We thank Thee for our blessed Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to 
laid down his life a ransom for the many, who shed his precious blood in order to save us from our sins, and who rose again. Because he lives, we shall live also. O oh God, we pray again for those that are bereaved. We think especially this evening of the Gillespie family. We pray for Joy and Gillian in the family circle. Lord, that they might know the nearness and the presence of the Lord with them. And Lord, remember all these other families, Lord, that we've been thinking about today. O oh God, we recognize that in the midst of life that we're in death. And Lord, we pray for the families that, O oh God, lost those two young people today. O oh God, in tragic circumstances, only 20 years of age, O oh God, I pray for those families and many others in our province, Lord, who have entered into the valley of the shadow. O oh God, we pray that they might know that underneath and round about are the everlasting arm. Lord, it brings before us again the brevity of life, the certainty of death, and, O oh God, the, uh, uh, the, the fact of eternity. We pray tonight, Lord, for those in the meeting who are still not saved, those listening on, that you would speak to their hearts. O oh God, even these many deaths that we've been considering today, that they might realize, Lord, that soon the death angel will come their way. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after death the judgment. And Lord, we're so conscious of that. But Lord, we thank Thee for the wonderful message of the gospel, that the Lord Jesus Christ died upon a cross so that we could live and have everlasting life. Lord, even as we've been singing this evening, we thank Thee that there's life for a look at the crucified one. We praise Thee, Lord, that there's life in Christ and eternal life found in Him alone. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord, help us to point men to Jesus tonight. O oh God, we pray, come and meet with us in this meeting. We need thy presence. We pray to bless our brother John as he would come to sing. Bless every part of this service. May it be owned of God. We just pray, Lord, that you would hide us far behind the cross, that none would be seen save Jesus only. And what we pray for ourselves, we pray, Lord, for every place tonight that is preaching thy word where men are true to the book and true to the blood. Bless your servants right across our province and right further afield, Lord, right across this world. And may this be a high day for the preaching of the gospel. So close us in with yourself now. Be one of our number. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. We're delighted to have our good friend and brother, Mr. John Porter, with us tonight again. We welcome him and his wife. You're very welcome. John's no stranger to any of us. And we always enjoy him coming along to sing. I'm going to ask John to come and bring us a couple of messages in song. He's going to sing four pieces for us tonight. He's going to sing his first two pieces now. <clears throat> It's my honor to be here tonight uh, amongst you, and I thank you once again for the invitation to come along and just to share a few songs to help us to point us and get our minds concentrated about the Savior. When I pause in the hush of His holy presence, when I'm so still, I can hear him Word. When I pause to pray, I enter his cathedral. These are the times when God seems so near. There are times when I cannot feel his presence when the clouds of doubt obscure the master's smile but when I'm still enough to hear his gentle whisper then I know my Lord has been there all the while when I pause in the 
hush of his holy presence. When I'm so still, I can hear each whispered word. When I pause to pray, I enter his cathedral. These are the times when God seems so near. When I pause in the hush of his holy presence, when I'm so still, I can hear each whispered word. When I pause to pray, I enter his cathedral. These are the times when God seems so near. Yes, these are the times when God sings so near. Do we think that's a strange wee song to sing at a gospel service? Did you listen to, open, to the opening prayer? Did you listen to hear how families are coming through the, the valley of the shadow of death? There are some times that the clouds of life do obscure the master's smile, you know. But whenever you come into his presence to pray, that's when you sense that God is near. Believer, we need to know that our God is near. We really do. Far dearer than all that this world can impart was the message that came to my heart. How that Jesus alone for my sins did atone. And Calvary, it covers it all. The stripes that he bore and the thorns that he wore told his mercy and his love evermore. And my heart Bowed in shame as I called on his name Cause the work of Calvary covers it all Calvary covers it all All my past with all its sin and all its stain All my guilt all my despair Jesus took on him there and Calvary covers it all how matchless the grace when I look in the face of this Jesus my crucified Lord my redemption complete I Found at his feet. You know what? Just simply this that Calvary covers it all. If you know what, join on with me, will you? Calvary covers it all. I passed with its sin and stain. My guilt. And despair, Jesus took on him there, and Calvary covers it all. How blessed the thought that my soul by him bought, listen to this, shall be his in the glory on high, where with gladness. And song I'll be one of that throng Because Calvary, it covers it all Calvary covers it all All my 
my past with its sin and its stain. My guilt and despair, Jesus took on him there, and Calvary, it covers it all. Yes, my guilt, my despair, Jesus took on him there, and Calvary, it covers it all. Amen. May the Lord bless those lovely hymns to our hearts, and God, Calvary covers it all. Our Bible reading tonight is taken from a very familiar passage, John's Gospel chapter 3. John's Gospel chapter 3. We're just going to read a few verses from verse 16, a very well-known text from the Gospel of John. John chapter 3 verse 16. If you haven't a Bible with you, just listen very carefully to these words, and we do pray that the Lord will bless His Word to all of our hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil heareth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. We know the Lord will bless the reading public reading of his precious word to all of our hearts. Good to see you all in God's house this evening. Again, let me welcome you, and especially if you're here visiting, we give you a very, very warm welcome. Just a few announcements uh, for the incoming week. Do you remember the prayer meeting on Tuesday night at 8 p.m., and I'll be here in the will of the Lord to take the prayer meeting, and we'll continue our studies in the little epistle of Titus. So, do remember the prayer meeting come. We'll have our Bible study for half an hour and then we'll get down to our time of prayer to pray for the work of God here in Tandragee and indeed further afield. Remember the holiday Bible clubs as they continue as well. As I was saying this morning, uh, there was a good number of children this week that attended those holiday Bible clubs and were continuing to remember these after-school Bible clubs. And You pray for them. Pray for Philip and those who have helped him. And it was great to see so many out helping uh, in the week that has just gone out into eternity. Member session, members again the, on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, the session will meet first. And then at 8 o'clock, the full committee will meet after that in the will of the Lord. The early morning prayer meeting uh, will continue this month on Friday morning at 7 a.m. And certainly we have enjoyed these special times of prayer. And if you are able to come, then you'll be made very welcome. Do remember the service is next Lord's Day, 11.30 in the morning, 6.30 at night, preceded by the half hour of prayer. And our sister Bethany Gibbon will be here next Lord's Day to sing at the Gospel Rally. Remember also the Senior Citizens Outing on Saturday, this Saturday, the 15th, leaving the car park here, folk, at 8.30 sharp in the morning, so do please take note of that, 8.30 a.m. sharp. Do remember to pray also for the International Congress and the Martyrs Memorial from Monday the 1st of July to the 5th of July. Now, there are leaflets at the door. If you haven't got one of these leaflets yet, the information is on that, and feel free to take them and pray for that, those special, special meetings. That's all the announcements. I'm going to make just now. We're going to sing another hymn, and the offering is going to be taken up. It's another lovely hymn, 275 in our own hymn book. Oh, what a Savior that he died for me. From condemnation he hath made me free. He that believeth on the Son, saith he, hath 
everlasting life. I wonder tonight, are you a possessor of everlasting life? You can be through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. And I pray tonight that the Lord will speak to your heart and reveal unto you your great need of God's salvation. We'll keep our seats for the first few verses of this, this hymn, please. Stand for the last verse, please. going to ask John to come and bring us his final two messages and so on. Thank you, John. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love o'ershaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Hark, tis the voice of angels. 
born in a song to me over the beats of glory over the jasper sea safe in the arms of Jesus safe on his gentle breast there by his love or shaded sweetly my soul shall rest safe in the arms of Jesus safe from corroding care safe from the world's temptations sin cannot harm me there free from that blight of sorrow free from my doubts and fears only a few more trials only a few more tears and we plant of them don't we but we will be safe in the arms of jesus Safe on his gentle breast, there by his love, or shaded, or sweetly my soul shall rest. Jesus, my heart's dear refuge, Jesus has died for me. Firm on the rock of ages, ever my trust shall be. Here let me wait with patience, wait till the night is o'er, wait till I see the morning break on his golden shore. safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love or shaded, sweetly my soul shall rest, sweetly my soul shall rest. Shall have its rest. It's only a children's hymn, isn't it? Safe in the arms of Jesus, but I was asked to sing it at a funeral one day, not so very, very long ago. And how poignant and how amazing it was to think that, that the person that was in front of us at the time in the church, well, that was only the shell. She was in the nearer presence of Christ. And it's a wonderful thing to know that Christ saves for eternity. I think you know this last song. And I was asked to sing this piece. And it's been sung by Johnny Cash, by Jim Reeves. And now I'm going to murder it. But this, let's just remember, indeed, that we have a God who has forgiven our sins and bought everything by his precious blood. There was a time on earth when in the books of hell an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top with many sins below. I went up to the keeper and he settled it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today cause he washed my sins away and the old account was settled long ago my old account was large and growing every day for i was always sinning and never tried to pray oh but when i looked ahead and saw such pain and woe 
got it settled and settled it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, my old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, cause he washed my sins away, and the old account was settled long ago. When in that happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll sing redemption story and praise him for his love. I'll not forget that book with pages white as snow because I came and settled and settled it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today Cause he washed my sins away And the old account was settled long ago O oh, sinner, trust the Lord Repent of all your sin For this he has commanded That you should enter in And then live 100 years here below well you know you've got it settled cause you settled it long ago long ago long ago yes the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today cause he washed my sins away and the old account was settled long ago Long ago, long ago, yes, my old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, cause he washed my sins away, and the old account was settled long ago, yes, my old account was settled long ago. Tell me this, is your old account, is it settled? Long ago. Amen. Let's all buy in a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee that many of us can say it tonight that the old account has been settled. We thank Thee, Lord, that our sins, which were many, are forgiven. We praise Thee, Lord, that we stand before God, redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. And, O oh God, we pray tonight for those in this meeting, perhaps those listening on, and they know nothing of sins forgiven. O oh God, I pray that even this night, that they would turn from their sin and seek the Lord and find eternal redemption. We thank Thee that there's life for a look at the crucified one. We praise Thee that because of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, they can leave this meeting redeemed and on their way to heaven. And Lord, that's our prayer this evening, defeat the devil in their lives. We pray, Lord, that You would bind the strong man tonight, that You would spoil his goods. And, O oh God, that even this night, there be new names written down in the Lamb's book. Bless us now, we pray thee. Fill us with thy gracious Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, only to say those things that will be pleasing to thee. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. Please turn to John's Gospel, chapter 3. I want to read verse 18 to you. He that believeth on him, that is the Lord Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. These words were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ many years ago, and they were spoken to a religious Pharisee named Nicodemus. These words, of course, are very clear, precise, and challenging words, especially to those in the meeting who are not saved. And I pray tonight that God will take His Word, the words of the Savior, 
and write them upon your heart. You see, when the Lord Jesus walked upon this earth, he spoke in a language that everyone could understand. And I don't believe that there's anyone in the service tonight that cannot fully grasp what Christ is seeking to teach here in this text of God's precious, precious words. There's nothing here that is difficult for the human mind to grasp. You may not believe the words. You may not accept that the words are true, but nevertheless, you can, I believe, understand exactly what the Savior here is seeking to teach. And I pray, therefore, that the Holy Spirit, if you're not saved in the meeting or listening on, that the Holy Spirit will open up your mind and open up your heart to not only hear the Word of God tonight and hear the words of the Savior, but to receive these words, believe them, and come to a saving knowledge of the Savior. My friend, that's our desire this evening. We have no other desire but to point you to Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And you this evening can have your sins forgiven. You can receive everlasting life tonight because of what He has done on the cross of Calvary. And we'll say more about that just in a moment. But what do these words teach us? These words of the Savior. What is the Lord Jesus seeking to get across to us tonight? Well, first of all, I want you to notice the present position of the sinner. Because the Lord Jesus Christ sets forth very clearly here the present position of the sinner, the spiritual state of the ungodly. Look what it says in verse 18. He that believeth not is condemned already. These are the words, as I've already emphasized, of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And my friend, what the Savior here is seeking to teach is this, that if you're not saved in this meeting, then you are condemned already. That means that at this present moment, you're without God, without Christ, and without hope. It means that you're sitting in the condemned cell awaiting the sentence to be carried out. Because like the condemned criminal, you may be here tonight thinking that you're okay, but like the condemned criminal, you have been tried, you're found guilty, and you have been sentenced to death. And the only thing that has still to happen is for the sentence to be executed. But as far as your present condition is concerned, before before God, you're lost and condemned already. I don't know whether you know this fact or not, but in the United States of America, at the present moment, there are over 2,200 people on death row. Now, that means that they have been tried and found guilty of a capital crime, and they are sentenced to death. The only thing left to happen is for that sentence to be carried out. My friend, in a spiritual sense, tonight you're in death row. You're condemned already. And all that has to take place is for the sentence to be carried out. I wonder, do you see yourself as God sees you this evening? A condemned soul. Because of sin, because of the nature that you have been born with. Oh, I pray this evening that God the Holy Spirit will take the Word of God and burn it within your heart and within your soul this evening. What a terrible state you're found in tonight if you're found without Christ as your Savior. You are condemned already. Why is this sinner without Christ condemned already? Let me give you two reasons very quickly. Because they refuse to believe in the Son of God as their Savior. And not what verse 18 says. Look at it very carefully. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. My friend, you're condemned already tonight because you refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and as Lord of your life. And that's why you're in the condemned cell tonight. That's why you're in death row spiritually. 
because you have refused to come and trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Redeemer. As I look around the congregation tonight, I see those who have been brought up in Christian homes, those who have sat under the sound of the gospel for many, many years, and you're still unsaved, and you still refuse to come and trust the Lord Jesus as your Redeemer. My friend, that's why you're condemned already. That's why you're in this condemned cell. That's why you're lost tonight, because you have rejected the Son of God as Savior of your life, but also because they want to hold on to their sin. The reason why you're condemned tonight is because you want to remain in the darkness. You want to hold on to sin. Take a look at what it says there in verse 19 and 20. And this is the condemnation. This is why you're condemned. Light has come into the world. That light is Christ. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ here is teaching very simply and very plainly and very dogmatically that the sinner without Christ is condemned, condemned already. And the reason for it is because he wants to go on in the darkness. He wants to hold on to sin. But my friend, remember this, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I pray tonight that God, the Holy Spirit, will take the Word of God, the words of the Savior this evening, and burn them within your heart and within your soul, that you tonight would see yourself as God sees you. My friend, it's not what the preacher thinks, or what the singer thinks, or what the elders think, or what other Christians think. Here tonight, very simply and clearly and plainly, we have what Jesus thinks. We have what the Savior taught when he walked upon this scene of time. And as he looked down upon the multitudes that he loved, as he looked down upon the multitudes that he wept over, he recognized that they were as sheep having no shepherd, and they would not listen to him as the Messiah. And that's why at the end of the day they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. My friend, is that what you're saying tonight in your heart? I will not have this man, Jesus of Nazareth, to rule over me. My friend, if it is, remember this. You're condemned already. Just like those in death row in the United States of America, spiritually speaking, that's where you're at tonight. And because of your sin, you're without God. And you're without hope. And that's why this evening you need to come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. The present position of the sinner. But notice something else in the text here. And this is wonderful, I think, in verse 18. Notice the personal promise of the Savior. Underline this phrase in the text. He that believeth on him is not condemned. It's not a tremendous text of Scripture, and our brother John was singing about it tonight. Here we have a wonderful promise from the lips of, of the Savior. The Lord Jesus himself declares that there is no condemnation for those who believe on him. No judgment. No hell. No lack of fire. No eternal punishment. No banishment from God. If the sinner will believe on Christ and accept the Lord Jesus as their own and personal Redeemer. What a wonderful promise the Lord makes to all of those who believe on Him. You know, it was the Apostle Paul who said in Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. What a tremendous text of Scripture that is. And there's another wonderful text. Indeed, the words of the Savior in John chapter 5, verse 24. Listen to these words. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Thank God tonight, those of us who are saved, we have passed from death unto life. Thank God tonight the Lord has given us everlasting life. What does the Savior say on one occasion? 
I give unto my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of mine hand. My friend, if you're in this meeting tonight unsaved, in the condemned cell, just awaiting judgment to fall because of your refusal to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, thank God this evening you can have eternal life tonight. You can have that sentence of death removed this evening because of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. On what basis does Christ make this promise of everlasting life to all those who believe on His name? He makes this promise on the basis of His deity, on the basis of His death, and on the basis of His dynamic resurrection. Who is the Lord Jesus? He's the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. God manifest in the flesh. And thank God, because of who He is, He can make this tremendous promise to give you and I everlasting life if we put our faith and trust in Him, if we believe on Him as our Savior. Because of who He is, He has made the promise. And because of His death, because of what He has done, because on the cross of Calvary, there upon that middle tree in Golgotha's brow, He died the just for the unjust, shedding His precious blood in order to redeem sinners unto Himself. And because of His death, and because of His resurrection, thank God tonight, you can find and know eternal salvation through the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, although the sinner, you tonight, are condemned already, sitting in the condemned cell, awaiting the sentence to be carried out, Christ will set the prisoner free. He will set you free from the condemned cell if you believe and accept Christ as your Savior. And the Lord Jesus will do that on the basis of what He has accomplished on Calvary's middle cross. My friend, that's the gospel tonight. If you're not saved, thank God this evening you can be saved. If you're found in this meeting lost and on your way to a lost eternity, thank God you can leave this meeting knowing that your sins are forgiven and you can know that you're on your way to heaven. Because the Lord Jesus Christ promises all who believe on Him. It's not what the text says. Look at it again. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on Christ is not condemned. Oh, my friend, it's just a simple act of faith, a step of repentance, coming and acknowledging that you are the sinner before God and acknowledging that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only Redeemer of the sinner. And thank God this night, if you were to bow by faith at Calvary, you could leave this house redeemed and on your way to heaven. I tell you, there's no greater blessing. There's no greater blessing tonight than to know that you're ready for heaven and for home. And my friend, you can have that assurance this evening. You can leave this house knowing that you're on your way to the glory land. Would you not like to know that you're going to heaven? You know, we've been considering today all of these deaths in our congregation and in our denomination. And even today, I have been hearing of other young people being plunged out into eternity. Two deaths over the weekend, young people only 20 years of age. And we could repeat that every week of this year. Young people in car accidents being plunged out into the great eternity. My friend, what if it was to be you? What if we were to get up some Sunday in the next few weeks and announce your passing, your sudden death? Where would your soul be in the great eternity? My friend, if you were to die in your present condition before God, then you would be lost because you're condemned already. You'd be lost forever and forever and forever. That's why you need a Savior. That's why you need this night to come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Redeemer. If you're not saved, you're on death row. 
but you can be set free from death row by trusting Christ for mercy and for salvation this evening. Because the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Notice something else here but in the text. Notice the practical power of salvation. My, what a glorious truth this is. Not only the present position of the sinner and the personal promise of the Savior, but notice the practical part of salvation. You see, when we read on down this portion of Scripture, we learn this, that when the guilty sinner comes to Christ for salvation, they are brought out of darkness into the marvelous light of the gospel. Not only are their sins forgiven, but their eyes are opened and they begin to walk in newness of life. Look at verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. This text is describing the sinner whose life has been transformed by the power of salvation. Only God working salvation in the sinner's life could have performed this wonderful change. But what a tremendous change takes place when the sinner is brought from darkness into light. When the sinner accepts God's way of salvation, yields to God's way and God's word, thank God they are brought out of the darkness of sin. And thank God they are brought into the marvelous light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What happens when a sinner enters into the light of the gospel? He begins to walk in the truth. That's what verse 21 teaches. He begins to please the Lord. That's what verse 21 teaches. He becomes a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. My friend, you can know this new life in Christ tonight. Praise God, you can experience this change in your heart and in your life. This evening, all you have to do is to receive Christ as your Savior. It's not what John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 says. It says this, But as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What the Lord has done for so many in this meeting, in that he has transformed their lives and change them completely, he can do for you what he has done for so many in this country tonight. He can do for you. But my friend, you must, like every saved sinner, come and bow at the foot of the cross, and you must yield to him and trust him as your own and personal Redeemer. We often sing that lovely chorus, only trust Him, only trust Him. Only trust Him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. And thank God He will save you now. My friend, you need God's salvation tonight. Because it's only God's salvation that can take you out of the darkness it's only God's salvation that can bring you to heaven. It's only God's salvation that can redeem you from hell. It's only God's salvation that can give you any hope as far as eternal, eternity is concerned. But in order for your life to be changed, in order for the gospel to change your life, you must come and accept Christ as your Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You've got to take that step of faith. You've got to take that step of faith. And you've got to realize that only Christ and what he has accomplished on the middle trail on Gotha's brow can change your life and transform your life. And he can do that tonight. At the beginning of John chapter 3, and we're all familiar, I'm sure, with 
the beginning of John chapter 3, we read about Nicodemus. Nicodemus, although a religious sinner, still needed his sins forgiven. Although a Jew and a Pharisee, still needed his life transformed. And that's why when the Lord Jesus looked into his eyes, he said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. The Savior emphasized this truth to this religious Pharisee. Ye must be born again. My friend, I would say to you tonight lovingly, at the end of this gospel service, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again or never enter heaven. Tis only blood-wise ones are there, the ransomed, unforgiven. And I pray tonight that you will come and that you will realize your spiritual state before God, that you're the sinner needing a Savior, but that you will heed the command of Christ and come to Him, and that you will listen to the promise of Christ, that if you believe on Him, He will give you everlasting life. And thank God if you do, then your life will be transformed and changed, and you can leave God's house knowing that your sins are forgiven and knowing that if death was to come your way, even before this night is out, that it would be absent from the body, but present with the Lord. Do you have that confidence tonight? Do you have that assurance? My friend, you can. All because of Calvary. All because of what the Savior has accomplished on the cross. May God bless His Word tonight to your heart and draw you to Christ in salvation. Let us all bow in a wee word of prayer this evening. Our loving and eternal Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for the message of the gospel, the simple message of the gospel. And, O God, we recognize that when the Lord Jesus walked upon this scene of time, He declared the truth that men were sinners needing a Savior, that men without Christ, without God, were condemned already. And, O God, we pray for those in this meeting tonight who are still strangers to grace and to God, that even this night, Lord, that you would so speak to their heart that they would cry out, What must I do to be saved? Lord, that they would come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee, Lord, for the Word of God this evening. We thank Thee, Lord, for the Scriptures of truth which are able to make men wise unto salvation. But, Lord, we pray that men and women and young people and boys and girls would heed the message of the Gospel and come and put their faith and trust in Thee. O oh God, show them tonight, teach them tonight that spiritually, Lord, they're in death row. And, Lord, if You were to take the breath from their body tonight, They'd be plunged out into hell itself. For, Lord, they're condemned already. And, Lord, they don't have to wait to the judgment day to find out their sentence. They're condemned already. But we thank Thee for the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We thank Thee that He died and shed His blood in order to save men and women from the consequences of their sin. O oh God, may sinners turn to the Savior tonight. May men and women seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. For you've said in your word that now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Lord, draw men and women to the, to the Savior. And Lord, we'll be very careful to give to thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. Separate us in thy love. Keep your hand upon us, Lord, to we meet again in thy will. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Folks, could I say it tonight? There's someone in the meeting and the Lord has spoken to you. If you'd like to speak to us, we don't have a too glad to open the Bible and to show you more clearly how you can be saved and how you can know it. But don't leave the meeting tonight without Christ. If you'd like to speak to our brother John or myself or someone else in the meeting, speak to them. But make sure you get this matter settled of your soul salvation because we don't know what a day may bring forth. God bless you and safe home.